When we're looking at these eight angles, the way that we describe the relationship between any two is based on the angle's relationship to either the inside, so let's change color here, the inside of lines L and M, or the outside of lines L and M, as well as what side of the transversal T those angles are on. The first pair, however, that we're going to look at are called corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are when we focus on the two points of intersection. We should notice that the two lines split us into four angles. We use green down here. If the angles we're looking at are both, so let's say, the upper right part of this cross, then they are called corresponding angles. So an example of corresponding angles would be angle 2 and angle 6. Can you spot another pair of corresponding angles? Another pair would be angle 1 and angle 5, since both angles are the upper left of their cross. Also, we see angles 3 and angle 7, and finally angle 4 and angle 8. Each of these pairs are an example of corresponding angles because each have the same location, upper left, bottom right, of the cross that's formed at the points of intersection. So let's start looking at some other pairs of angles now. There we go. And my line keeps erasing. Fantastic. Okay. Next, we're going to look at what's called alternate interior angles. The alternate tells me how my angles are related with regards to the transversal. So alternate tells me that I'm on opposite sides of the transversal. For example, angle 1 and angle 8 are on opposite sides of the transversal. However, the interior tells me where I am relative to lines L and M. So interior will be the space that's in between lines L and M. For example, angle 3 and angle 6. These are on opposite sides of our transversal, making them alternate angles. And they are in between lines L and M, making them interior angles. So lines th angles 3 and angle 6 are an example of alternate interior angles. What would be another example of alternate interior angles? Hopefully you picked angles 4 and angle 5. Those are our pairs of alternate interior angles. If you're ready, let's move on to the next pair of angles. Next, we have alternate exterior angles. Take a moment, based on the naming of these angles as alternate exterior angles, try to come up with an example from our picture of what would constitute alternate exterior angles. <laughs> 